name's Kelly Bevier. Hi, Kelly. And where are you from? I am from a really small town in Ohio. It's called Grand Rapids. And how old are you? I'm 16 years old. 16 oh, years wow. old. Yeah. Wow. And what, what is your dream? Uh, my dream is to win America's Got Talent. <laughs> As a singer? As a singer, yes. Who do you compare yourself to? I don't compare myself to anyone. I That's think good. I'm, yeah. As Simon always says, he looks for somebody who's original, somebody who we can hear something we've never heard before. Is that what we're about to hear? Hopefully, yes. I hope so, too. I like the whole look. It's like a little Audrey Hepburn. Oh, it's thank you. Um, my hair wasn't really like my choice. Um, I'm a survivor of stage three ovarian cancer. No way. Yeah. I kind of came here today to show people that no matter what you've gone through, to keep chasing your dreams. Oh, what a great message. Wow, you're an inspiration. We can't wait to hear you. Good luck. Thank you. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> Like a small boat on the ocean, sending big waves into motion. Like how a single word can make a heart open. I might only have one match, but I can make an explosion. And all those things I didn't say were wrecking balls inside my brain. I will scream them aloud. This time, this is my fight song. Take back my life song. Prove I'm more song. My power's turned on. Starting right now, I'll be strong. I'll play my fight song. And I don't really care if nobody else believes. Like a small boat. On the ocean, sending big waves into motion. Like how a single word can make a heart open. I might only have one match, but I can make an explosion. <laughs> I love everything about you. Thank you so much. Just, you know what? I just had this feeling when you walked out, I can't explain it. Just your spirit, the choice of song, your voice. Uh, I think you're really special. I've just got this really incredible feeling about you. Sorry, I've got to do this. And we'll ride. What's your name? Uh, Mandy Harvey. And who's this? My interpreter. What's your name? Sarah. Nice to meet you, Sarah. Nice to meet you, you, sir. Hi, Sarah. Doing well, thank you. Hello. Okay, Mandy, so I think I've worked this out. So you're deaf? Yes, I, I lost all my hearing when I was 18 years old. Wow, and how old are you now? Uh, 29, so it's 10 years. Wow. And Mandy, how did you lose your hearing, if you don't mind me asking? I have a connective tissue disorder, so basically I got sick and my nerves deteriorated. You were singing before you lost your hearing? Yeah, I've been singing since I was four. So I, I left music after I lost my hearing and then uh, figured out how to get back into singing with muscle memory, using visual tuners and trusting my pitch. So your shoes are off because you're feeling the vibration. Is that how you're following the music? Yeah, I'm feeling the tempo, the, the beat uh, through the floor. And Mandy, what are you going to sing? I'm going to uh, sing a song that I wrote called Try. OK, can you tell me what it's about? After I lost my hearing, I gave up. But I want to do more with my life than just give up. So. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Good for you. OK, well, look, this is your moment, and good luck. Uh, OK. Blue. 
going to need a translator for this. Hello, hello. How are you? Nervous. <laughs> it's okay. And what's your name, please? My name is Michael Ketterer. Where are you from? I'm originally from East Tennessee, but right now I live in Orange County. And tell me a bit about you. What do you do for a living? I'm a pediatric mental health nurse. Yeah. Okay. And what are you going to be doing for us? Are you a singer? Yes, sir. So this is kind of a different direction, you coming on a show like this, Michael. So tell me what the thought process was. What's, what's the ambition, the dream here? Well, um, my family's my reason why I'm here. My wife and my six children. Six, six. children. Yeah. <laughs> find singers on these shows is it about being technical or is it about being relevant and sometimes for me it's just about being real and a surprise if I'm being honest with you because you were so nervous I was concerned for you but I think sometimes actions speak louder than words shoes so much. Thank you. <laughs> How old are you, Tyler? I'm 11 years old. So it looks like you have the violin. When did you yes. start playing violin? Well, I started playing the violin when I was seven and a half. And what made you get into playing violin? Um, I wanted to start playing the violin because I was being bullied in school. Aww. Oh, man. It's because I had cancer. I almost died.
if you don't mind me asking, Tyler, how is your health now? Well, I've been in remission for almost four years. Most people are bullied because they're better than the people who bully them. You know Thank that. You. And I think you have such an amazing talent, such a personality, and I would like to say something on your behalf to the bullies. Thank you. How's life been since you've been on the show? Tell me. I'm sure you remember the first time I came up on the stage in front of y'all, I was so shy about my voice. I had zero confidence. But since the show, I have become an advocate for other burn survivors with Shriners Hospital. So good to you. <laughs> well, now I'm excited to hear what you're going to say. <laughs> Thank you. I hope you guys like it. Okay, good luck. <laughs> Thank you. I'm looking forward to this. She's so fantastic. Okay, here we go again, here we go. There goes my heart beating, and you are the reason I'm losing my sleep. Please come. Back now, there goes my mind racing, and you are the reason that I'm still breathing. I'm hopeless now. I'll climb every mountain and swim every ocean just to be. I'm going to be honest with you, mm -hmm. um, I didn't really like it that much. Oh. I actually loved it. Uh, I have always wanted to do that for you. You so deserve it. This is what defines the world champion. Why this year, AGT? What's the dream and what's the plan? Uh, the dream right now, especially this year, is 2020. You know, we should never waste any more time. We're from a city where there's no hope, there's no influence. We don't see the right things when we go back home. But we never gave up on our hopes and dreams. So we want to give the young people something positive to look into, you know? It's about our culture, our city, our family, our family back home that's watching right now. And we understand that there's like a million dollars at stake right now. 
we already invest in our community with just as little as our pocket money. So a million dollars right now, we will really, really put on for our city. Good for you. Yeah, yeah. That's that. you a little head start here.
I'm singing an original song called It's Okay. It's Okay. Yeah. It's Okay is the story of the last year of my life. What do you do for a living? Um, I have not been working for quite a few years. I've been dealing with cancer. Oh, sorry. And how are you now? Uh, last time I checked, I had some cancer in my lungs, my spine, and my liver. Wow. I moved to California in the summertime. I changed my name thinking that it would change my mind. I thought that all my problems, they would stay behind. I was a stick of dynamite and it just was a matter of time, yeah. is stunning. Mm -hmm. It is. Absolutely stunning. And I, I totally agree with what Howie said, you know, about authenticity. There was something about that song after the way you just almost casually told us what you're going through and, oh, you know. You can't wait until life isn't hard anymore before you decide to be happy. And I'm not going to give you a yes. I'm going to give you something else. Where are you from, Sarah? I'm from Poland. Are you? Yeah. <laughs>
It must be such an unbelievable feeling doing this in front of an American audience, because yeah. I'm guessing this is probably where you dreamt of performing. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I can remember when I came to America for the first time, and that was 20 odd years ago. And that was a moment I'll never forget. And I want to make this a moment for you to remember forever. Oh! AGT has been changing my life, but it's been changing my family's life even more, especially my stepson. For those of you that don't know, my wife's older, I got a stepson, we like the same age, I call him Step Man, all right? <laughs> and he's been exhibiting unusual behavior because he's upset that I portrayed him on the show as irresponsible and gets in trouble in school. So he's been trying to prove he's responsible by buying products around the house with my money. <laughs> And I didn't even know. I walked in on him eating his cereal. I'm like, hey, don't waste that milk. He's like, I bought it. <laughs> like, okay, okay. And he doesn't waste the milk. He walks the bowl of milk past the sink and places the bowl of milk inside of the refrigerator. <laughs> so first, I'm like, who reuses cereal milk? <laughs> but then I was like, how good would my cereal taste double cocoa puffed up? <laughs> <laughs> All these years I've been single milking it. <laughs> I just needed my milk to marinate. <laughs> The fame is affecting Stepman. He's been invited to all these parties, but he's been staying out too late. So my wife and I, we've been deciding how to handle it. I'm like, I don't know what to do. She's like, go get him. <laughs> I drove around the corner to pick him up. I came home three hours later. <laughs> <laughs> she said, Michael, you been drinking? I'm like, we got some of the same friends. <laughs> Everybody was there. He's still there. I'm gonna go get him again. <laughs> I'll find out why you weren't invited. <laughs> and on top of all of that, I have responsibilities in the community. I'm a little league coach, yes. Yeah. Yeah, we have a 12-year-old together. Yeah, that's the one we call real kid. <laughs> and they call me Coach Fro, because I can't fit the hat. <laughs> I just set it on top. I love coaching, you know? I just hate when kids get hit by the pitch because it is not supposed to be funny. <laughs> but baseball, <laughs> baseball is a game of technique. When the ball's coming at you, you turn and you brace. But a lot of the kids, they get afraid and they get hit in the worst places, like the center of the back, and I see it happening. The ball's coming and they turn and like, ah, ah, ah. And the worst thing you can do when you're holding in your lap is look at another person. <laughs> you know, oh, 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 oh. And the kid's like, I can hear you. The pitch was 25 miles per hour. She's trying to kill me. <laughs> hey, you guys, I'm Mikey Winfield. Thank you very much, America. Thank you, America. Danny O for Mikey. I love, love, love people who compete and I wasn't expecting to do this, but I'm going to do it. My name is Putri Ariani. I'm 17 years old. I'm from Indonesia. Oh. <laughs> Putri, is this your first time in America? This is my very first time. I'm so excited. I love all the thing in here. What is your talent? I am a singer. How long you been singing? Maybe since I was born. <laughs> and what is your dream? My dream is being a biggest diva in the world, like win the Houston and win a Grammy Award. Oh, wow. Yes. Are you, are you going to school now? Yes, I'm in high school, but I hope that I can get in Juilliard's College of Music for my college program. Why AGT? Have you always wanted to come here? I hope that I can win America's Got Talent so I can reach my dream. Okay, we're so happy that you're here and excited. We want to see you. Thank you so much. 
She's so sweet. It's so cute. Yeah. Does that mic feel like it's a good spot for you? Cool. And the key's good? Yes. Okay, cool. Have fun. Her voice is amazing. Yes. And thanks. you have father. Yes, I'm father. Very nice to meet you. Yes, nice to meet you. Uh, does Petrie have a step in the song? Yeah. Yeah. You want to sing for Pokemon? Yeah. Yeah. So you want to sing it for you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. What did you want? Well, so this is Simon. Did you like that one? I, I just said to Saputri, I like her voice so much. Thank I you want so her much, to Simon. sing a second song, please. This song is special for you, Simon. Well, thank you. Thank you. 
tonight especially the very first song that you sang like how you switch from your chest voice to your head voice like that's how my, you sorry, yeah, sorry that's my original song oh Thank wow you. that's even yeah. more amazing you have a kind of a a glow about you and tell me about you're waiting for something at your school I really want to go to Juilliard. Okay. I don't know whether this is going to make a difference or not. However, he's standing up. A short spirit will come down. You are, I think, one of the first women we've ever had on our show. I am not strange to you. Yeah, I don't know. It's true. There's the gold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One more time for Pucci Ariani! I'm going to present to you the roast of Simon Cowell. Oh. So I got into my comedy labs. I did a big data analysis, right? I looked at Simon's likes and dislikes, and I charted them, because I'm me. And so here we go. We'll start with his dislikes. Uh, number one, PowerPoint. If I'd known that, I would have gotten something completely different in my audition. 3% likability, that's really not likable. Uh, number two, uh, shaving. The man does not own a razor, right? No, maybe you do shave, you're just so masculine, the minute you finish, boom, the hair pops back out. Uh, at 1%, Parmesan cheese. <laughs> Parmesan, Parmesan. Uh, clowns, if you know, he hates clowns. He, I, I can't even stay on this slide. And finally, the biggest dislike, minus 6% is uh, falling off a bike. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry. Too, too soon? Have you thought about training wheels? That's all I'm saying. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Stan, in what world do you live in, Rebecca? Where some 17-year-old dude is showing up to this house party like, <laughs> y'all not gonna believe this. I got Pinot Grigio. <laughs> yeah, got that Grigio. <laughs> Let's do shots of Chardonnay. Let's start a book club. It's never happened, right? You don't know a 17-year-old that owns a corkscrew. That's weird, all right? Not one time in your entire life can you tell me a time where you've seen a 17-year-old dude be like, mm, 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 mm. This Merlot pairs so well with the Doritos Locos Taco. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's good. It's just something about Zinfandels in a Hot Pocket that is to die for. <laughs> Sophia! You, you did so much magic in two and a half minutes that I don't even know what I was seeing. You made me believe in magic. This is amazing. This was better than your audition, and I really want to know what Simon thinks! Simon! Did he win you over? I think I helped you. No! I do. I really, really do. I think magic that... Simon. No, by me saying no at the auditions, I think has pushed you 
to be a better magician. <laughs> and I'm very happy to say on live television, I am officially an idiot. Yeah! No. Howie! I want to give a standing ovation to, Let me to Howard Stern. Because I think you made the best choice. It this is. is probably the best wild card. Uh, please, Nobody please, has done please, better. Hug it out. Please, 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 Hug it out. Please, 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 They're gonna kiss please, on live please, TV. Please, 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 they were arguing. Oh! I think I see tongue. There was tongue involved. Magic is definitely in the air. Oh, you did it! Times, oh. Howie? Oh. You both did it! They kissed on live television. Where's my wife? <laughs> I worked at this grocery store for a lot of hateful years. Why is it when you hate your job, they won't fire you? <laughs> <laughs> and now look. I worked in the worst department at the grocery store. Not the meat, not produce, not the freezer. I worked in the steel department. You familiar with the steel department, right? Self-checkout lane? <laughs> I got paid to watch people steal all day. And people think you stupid. Like, you know when they gonna rob you when they bringing up their stuff, they always gotta look back up at you. They're like, boop, boop. <laughs> this one dude tried to humiliate me. Like, I knew he was gonna rob us because I'm looking at him, he's looking at me. I'm like, just steal it. <laughs> He tries to play me in front of the entire store while he's ringing his stuff up. He makes the beat noise with his mouth. <laughs> he didn't even do it right. Like, you gotta act this out, go all in, raise your pitch at least. He's like, I <laughs> Like, the produce is not even supposed to make a sound. <laughs> You're beeping unbeepable stuff. When I got invited to come in America's Got Talent Champions, it was like all my dreams came true at once. I thought he was going to be a singer. So I decided to do some research on the judges. Did you know that backstage there are five hairdressers, three makeup artists, a wardrobe department, and a whole team of nutritionists? <laughs> <laughs> and that's just to maintain Simon's new look. <laughs> Victoria's Secret supermodel. <laughs> and she showed me one of your videos. But then Dad came home from work and we watched all your videos. <laughs> over and over again. This is Barbara Walters and today on my show, I have award-winning actress Natalie Portman. Natalie, I hear you're having a baby. I am Barbara. <laughs> We're thinking of naming the baby Oscar, but that's, that, that's silly because that's my cat's name, so. Hey y'all, it's Molly Cyrus, what's up? Okay, good. What, Dad? No, I'm not gonna clean my room right now. Want me to clean out your bank account? <laughs> I got a motorcycle. I don't like telling people I have a motorcycle, because every time I tell someone, they always gotta tell me a story about how their friends crashed on a motorcycle. You know, like, why do people have to be so negative? I don't go up to pregnant women telling them my dad left. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so annoying. So annoying. I walked at my apartment one time, right? I walked in my apartment and my neighbor walked up to me. She was like, oh my God, you got a motorcycle? Are you stars? Are you stars? You better be careful. I got in a car wreck the other day. My car flipped eight times. I'm looking to be alive, blessed, right? Yeah, she black, by the way. <laughs> Everyone around us was like, you know, that, was, that is crazy that your car flipped eight times, you alive, you are blessed, you know? And I'm, I'm over here thinking, who the heck counted, right? Like. <laughs> Who's that calm when their car's flipping in the air? Ah! One! 
Nothing like it. Who's doing that? <laughs> My name is Preacher. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. That's, That's it. it. That's I can teach you how to do Ryan Reynolds, but first you have to do Jim Carrey's voice. And in order to do Jim Carrey, just imagine yourself as a giant Canadian bird, okay? <laughs> Hi there, judges. Uh, I have some voices for you. <laughs> Take that Canadian bird down to a sexy whisper, and you have Ryan Reynolds. Hi there. I have some voices for you, judges. <laughs> I hope you enjoy them. <laughs> that did sound like Ryan Reynolds. Oh my God. Okay, here's how to do Seth Rogen's voice. Yeah, take Santa Claus's laugh. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Now imagine Santa Claus eats a different kind of cookie. <laughs> 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 I just lay down chimneys and I deliver packages to kids and eat their cookies. <laughs> now you can do that. You know, I'm not from California, but I look like I am. <laughs> just another wobbly guy on the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> I made eight bucks walking over here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey, can you guys see this bracelet? Yeah. yeah. Good. Uh, just making sure, you know? uh, <laughs> no, Everybody always thinks that this is one of those copper magnetic healing bracelets. They're like, hey, does that thing work? I'm like, oh yeah, man. I was in a wheelchair last week. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm gonna put it on this arm next week. <laughs> I better take it off soon, though, you know? I don't want to get too better. <laughs> Might mess up my show, and then I have to figure out how to be a magic singing ventriloquist or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say we're not getting a puppet on that thing. Oh, my God! I just got the citizenship. Yeah! Until I got my citizenship, I never had a road rage. <laughs> if somebody cut me off, I'd be like, oh, so sorry. I was driving too slow. <laughs> but the day I got the citizenship, somebody cut me off. I'm like, what the heck? You can't cut me off. This is my land. <laughs> That's when I realized I become true American. <laughs> oh, that's great. He's hilarious. Because I felt entitled. <laughs> oh! Before the citizenship, somebody hold the door for me. I ran really fast. I'm like, thank you so much. After the citizenship, I'm like, uh, you hold the door, you peasant. <laughs> I got sassy. <laughs> I love her. Howie, I, I want to say this from, from my heart here. Uh, what you have done for the show, and as a friend, as one of the most amazing people I've ever worked with, oh, wow. I wanted to pay you a tribute to show your significance, and most importantly, your importance for the 10 years you've been on the show. Over to you, Tony. Sunset Boulevard. Okay, let's take what? a look. Here Sunset we go. Boulevard. Count it down with me, people. Where am I looking? Five, four, three, two, one. Yes! 
night you were brutally honest, and that didn't sit well with a lot of people online. Right. Uh, Right. How do you respond to that? Um, I'm not responding to them. You but, should apologize. But, you know what? The competition was brutal. The, and, and last night, we had the highest of highs and then some incredible, for me, personal disappointments. And we are here, and we are all paid, to be honest. I am brutally honest. That's why it was brutal. Good luck to everyone. But you sometimes are also grumpy. I'm not grumpy. Yeah, okay. And also, I'm, I'm translating. She said grumpy. Okay. Well, you they know what? Me. This is a good sign. Listen, Sophia, a lot of the judges, you guys disagreed on a lot of the acts last night. Why do you think that was? Um, well, we, well, first of all, we have different tastes. And we, we all have the same taste. Some of them don't know what they <laughs> what they what they're supposed to know. Uh, I know everything grumpy? we know. <laughs> How I was grumpy sometimes, and Simon is sometimes local, so it, there's nothing. <laughs> I admit it. I do admit it. <laughs> it was very hard on me growing up. He used to call me a huge waste. <laughs> You see, both of my parents wanted me to become a lawyer. Never even came close to becoming a lawyer, but I was once involved in a suit. <laughs> but I've since traveled the world, went to Spain, fell madly in love with a Spanish sundress. <laughs> and we broke up and I was pantalones. Yeah! I love him. But I'm happily married now. Aww. <laughs> My wife and I are Polly. It's polyester. <laughs> Our daughter Capri <laughs> brought home a pair of sweatpants. Hey, I want to be a supportive father, but I want to see her date someone ironed with a crease. This guy looked like he'd been donated. She asked if he could spend the night. I said, in my house, you'll sleep in separate drawers. <laughs> you know the problem when you go to a nursing home and you look like me? Yeah, they wouldn't let me out. <laughs> the only reason I'm here tonight is I had to get a night pass from the front desk. <laughs> the first thing I found out when I got old is that young people hate old people. Oh, is that right? No. Did you ever drive behind an old person? <laughs> yes. Does this look familiar? Yes. <laughs> yeah. The worst thing I'm experiencing now at 80 is that my hearing has gotten awful. I'm talking to this woman the other day, and she tells me she has a peanut allergy. Right, I misheard the word. <laughs> I said, what happens? She said, I start choking and gagging. Yo, this is a true story. When I was 10 years old, my parents sent me to Tourette's camp. Yeah, that's where the joke should end. <laughs> it's a real place, and I didn't realize it till this moment, but I found out that when other people twitch, it makes me twitch more. So on the first day, they put us in a circle with a hundred kids. Oh, no. The kid next to me did a shoulder roll, and my Tourette saw that and took that as a challenge. And I threw him a head flop. The girl next to him did a full body twitch, and everybody saw that, and all hell broke loose. <laughs> charts I can't explain why they're true. I just know from experience this is what's going to happen. Here's the locker room at my gym. I am the blue dot. I walk in. I start to get changed. The minute I get all my clothes off, 12 guys walk in, and this is where their lockers are. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> it defies statistics. Sometimes the statistics sound scary, but it's not when you look at it from a different angle. When I first got married, I heard 44% of marriages end in divorce. That's a scary number. Think about that. 40, my wife and I are like, do we stand a chance? Think of the other side. If 44% of marriages end in divorce, you know what that means? 56% of marriages end in death. <laughs> Till death do us part. <laughs> Those are the two ways that marriages end, folks. 
<laughs> if, if you're married, enjoy it now. It does not end well. <laughs> There was, you know, we were deliberated a lot about whether we put you through to the final. I think Howie in particular didn't want you to be here. Ah, yes. And no. I said, no, you know what? No. I don't care what you say, Howie. No. They're going through to the finals. And you know what? I was right. And you know what I love about you? It's different. And it's yeah. difficult. Okay. And I like people who take that moment. And you took that moment. And we're going to remember yeah. you. For me, yeah. best act of the night, only two are going through, remember. You've got to vote. Howie Canada represent! Yeah, he's a liar, eh? <laughs> no, I'm he's not. a real liar, eh? The only thing I'm mad at is that you worked on Canada's Got Talent. You would have won Canada's Got Talent. You guys are so fucking good. <laughs> My roommate's actually white, and he's like, uh, this is racist. Not all white people are serial killers. I'm like, well... <laughs> <laughs> It looks like all serial killers are white here, buddy. We're on season 14. Come on. You know what I'm saying? It's a clean sweep. Let's go. And I feel bad because white people are actually the only people in the world that can be serial killers. There's no other ethnicity in the world that can get away with eight unsolved murders in a row. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you don't think black people want to be serial killers? Of course they do. They cannot. Could you imagine a black serial killer? He would get pulled over on the way to getting supplies. <laughs> He hasn't even done anything yet, come on. Indians, Asians, Hispanics, we can't be serial killers. Our family's way too nosy. <laughs> My mom's an old Indian lady, she's a snitch. <laughs> My mom would just show up, where is the rope? What happened to the duct tape? Where is the bleach? I'm calling the cops. I'm like, come on, mom, you raised me. <laughs> Don't do this, I'm your son, come on. <laughs> Password is magic. Did you just look? No, not at the. Are no. you guys talking? No. <laughs> Freak. Magic. Yeah! Yes! Yes! Magic is the correct <laughs> word. That is cheating. Who heard him tell me the word? That's that cheating. That means that you were cheating already. <laughs> Jen, him, They're him, cheating him, 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 because him. they heard you <laughs> cheating. Yes. All right, nice. this is the I'm final sweating. clue. The we clue? are actually tied at the moment, <laughs> and we are going to start with Howie. The okay. password is... Ready? Million. Dollars. <laughs> million. Oh! He's right! Thank That's you very it. much. Everybody. Snack 